name is Nelly Ranta. I come from Elisa, whom you probably know from some commercials we are providing telephone services, communication services, IT services, and so on. And we are also a very key organization on learning, and that's what I'm going to tell you about. Learning and what helps learning coaching. So, this is a factory in Serbia. It has been a magnificent 10,000 people employing factory of cables. And last year, it looked like this. It was dying. It was not dying because it had its own equipment. It was dying because I think the people had stopped learning. So, is it just bringing learning people together and uh, letting these people do their jobs? You know, you put musicians together and they are able to play some sounds, they are able to make some very enjoyable music together. And what do they have there in common? They have their actually sheet music, they know the pieces, they have kind of scaffolds that help them work together, play together. Or in Japan, you can have 10,000 people running in stations, not rushing into each other because they have these lines and they have these signposts of how to walk. But what do you do when you are in the territory, when you really do not know what to do? It's a new way. No one can teach you of how to work. There are no signposts. You need to have some kind of ability to learn. And I think this is what's about in developmental culture. It's the ability to throw yourself into a new situation, feel safe in that way, and be able to know that others are going to help you if you're going to fail. They are not going to laugh at you if you are doing something which is awkward at the first time and so on. This is what we have been trying to do at Elisa, building a culture where everybody can learn together. It has been a very deliberate work since 2010, I think. And in the essence there, I think deep down are our values, core values that especially I want to lift out renewal having the continuous urge to do something better than the last time, to be curious, to challenge yourself, and to respect the other, because you cannot really look good when you're learning. And when you have respect to each other, you also appreciate that the other one might fail many times when they're going to learn things together. So this kind of spirit of continuous improvement is at the heart, and you need to have certain skills there. If you want to really analyze the situation, and really find out what's working, what's not. You need to be quite rigorous, because otherwise you're just playing around, doing things, doing that, and making a, quite a mess of it. So you have to be quite systematic, and at the same time very courageous. Because in many times, you really cannot analyze the situation, you just have to try out and look what's, what's happening. And you need to have quite good skills in that. So therefore, we have been building for our supervisors this kind of toolboxes, methods, frameworks, for how to learn, how to do development, how to try out things. And they had gotten quite good at it. And now the question is how? What makes them learn? Because people are not so good at learning when somebody tells them what to do. This is a signpost in um, Iceland near a hot spring, where they really had to warn people times and times again, do not touch the water and still they went and touched the water and burnt themselves. We are not that good at learning if we are told what to do. But we are quite good at learning if we are empowered to try out and to get feedback. And our very big effort in bringing this kind of learning culture has been the coaching style of leadership that we have been introducing with uh, our very good partner Bonnet is there for I think four years now. We have been training some 500 supervisors, experts and leaders for, with a, a five-day training for coaching style of leadership or coaching style of influencing. If you might not be a supervisor, but you, you are a person who otherwise has to influence others. And this has been a very, very big effort. It has demanded people to change a lot. Because if you are a coaching leader, you cannot be a person who says, you are going that way, follow me, please. You have to unlearn so much of your routines. You are not going to be an answering machine you put a coin in and then you give and get an answer. That's not what our leaders are about. So they have had to learn to ask, to coach, to spend more time in building people's thinking skills. That's not easy, you know. It, it looks very easy to just ask, ask questions, but when you are in the situation and you learn many routines, you really need some kind of a scaffold there. So we have brought 
external coaches to train our internal coaches. And the internal coaches spend actually quite a lot of time with our supervisors, helping them like a personal trainer in building up the coaching style of leadership. So it's kind of a revolution that we are having there, building this kind of away from command and control to everybody thinks, everybody is in the world with their hearts, this kind of culture. And that has been really inspiring. To give some kind of safe teams where you have the courage to experiment, to learn, and you know that you're getting support and not being kind of punished for failing, it's actually, that makes all the difference. And you might say that a good culture like that is at the same time kind of uh, enabling and opening up your possibilities, but it's also giving a safe structure inside where you can learn every day. That has been our journey of this. Thank you.